first one's just blunt force, you know. There's a lot of, um, there's more fear in the first set because you're trying to set an example for the second set. But the second set, muscular wise, feels like it does more for you. You know, you slow it down a little bit, focus on those contractions, and you just fucking squeeze the shit out of it. It's, um, they both offer something great. Like I say, I was, I'm a firm believer, you've got to move a good amount of weight and test your limits and your strength. But then you can use that to assess. It's going to be a, a good back off set for you. So if you do both, I think you can't go wrong, honestly. And I'll, 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 I'll treat you back for that. Two sets, that's all you need. So, always start with hamstrings. Just one form of curl, like, just to get those knees warm, but also get the heart rate a little bit elevated so you feel in the mood to kind of train. It's very hard to go in the gym and just be like, especially on a leg day, unless you're some of you sick bastards out there that love just going in and hammering legs. I think, you know, when you've been training them as long as some of us have, you kind of got to force it rather than find it, you know? So, um, in the gym, hamstrings first, a few sets on an exercise that feels good to you. You'll notice I used the standing hamstring curl today before I use the lying or, or, or a seated. The reason I use a standing is because I don't want to use any lower back, so I don't use the lane, because I'm trying to keep my lower back fresh for when we go into the squat. Obviously, if I wasn't doing a free bar squat today, then I don't mind. Say, example, if I was doing hack squats today instead, then I'd have been happy to do a lying hamstring curl as my first uh, movement for legs. So it's all just basically just sense and sensibility. You know, you're not trying to fatigue your lower back before you get into doing some heavy squats. So keep the back as fresh as possible. You'll notice I moved on to a leg extension after. That's just to pre-exhaust the quads. You know, you want to get a lot of blood in the quads before you do anything else on them. Because you don't want to go from, you know, freezing cold to super loading. Um, that's just, for me personally, something that's going to aggravate tendons and joints. So again, get the blood in from the back of the leg. Once that feels nice and warm and the knee feels lubricated, then you can start doing some extensions and get some blood in the front of the legs as well. By then you're actually ready to do a squat. The only thing I will say is, if you notice today, we just take our time of warming up. You know, no plates, one plate, two plate, three plate. If it takes longer than that, fair, so be it. You know, don't rush on a squat. Yeah, it's like a prime set, I suppose. Trying to prime yourself for your compound lift. I don't mind, with leg extension in particular, I don't mind the reps being higher anyway. So even if I'm on a machine like the prime, you can really load. I still won't, because like we were saying on yesterday's video, with these single joint exercises, I'm a lot more aware that it's far more dangerous to load. So I'll find like a mid-range weight and I shoot for the reps. So that was actually quite nice because that serves its purpose. It gets me ready for the next move. Every time I kind of increase the load, I just restrict the amount of output I have to save energy for the next feeler, which could ultimately end up being the set. 
Now this just comes down to how many reps do you want to achieve on your big set? I'm happy to go pretty low reps with a squat, so I'm going to go up again. Um, and if I get anywhere from four to 10, I'm kind of happy. But what I would suggest for anybody is, once you get to the load where you require getting assistance from these, there's no point doing complete sets. You might as well just get a little fill, one or two reps, and then move up. If it feels like you can. If it feels like it's the working set, just fucking go with it. Hit 10 reps, call it a day. Yeah. Come on! The worst thing you can do is feel off and then put more weight on. You need to get your groove first and foremost. So I would always advise just taking your time with that. Like I said to Nick earlier, I've taken longer than an hour before to be ready to squat. Um, and it is what it is. You know, if you want to have a good session, you want to squat well, you take your time. Don't mistreat it. Bear in mind it's a lower back loading exercise. Your spine's involved, your legs are involved, your hips are involved. So you've got to be very conscious of those things all being in unison and feeling good together. And that takes warming up. follow up with a secondary leg kind of movement for quads so two press variations one obviously was the squat the second one we used the Rogers uh, no we didn't use the Rogers sorry we used the hammer press from hammer strength the horizontal press really good exercise if you want to annihilate your quads with immediate effect like you'll feel it from rep one especially after squats as soon as you push that platform away from you quads are almost going to want to cramp up really good exercise mm. The amount of knee flexion you get. So if you look at your, start, your starting position, look at that. And then when you're pressing away, because it's on a pivot from the top, when your quad locks out, it locks out like that, rather than like uh, the other way. So you know when yeah. you're doing a tricep extension, obviously you're trying to bring the point of interest to the back of your arm. Yeah. You're now bringing that point of interest to the front of your quad. Yeah, so the load is moving up. Yeah, so your quad's like, bam. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and then finally, for upper leg, we finish up with some seated hamstring curl just to make sure that we do enough hamstring work because it's very easy to neglect those. Especially if you think, oh, I did a hamstring curl earlier, we're done. You're not done, you could do two exercises. Um, I do do a little bit of adductor work just because I've noticed from a bodybuilding standpoint, those being a little bit more developed certainly help with the thickness of your quadriceps from the front and they do help you with your strength and stability on some other movements as well. Finishing off with calves, just doing three or four sets on a calf raise of choice. You can do seated, standing, it doesn't really matter, as long as you feel it and you're working very hard. Um, that I just pyramid the weight up. All other exercises today were two sets, apart from the calves was three. Typically with the loading set first and then the back off set second. The only time I don't do that is if 
when I use the first weight that was meant to be loading, if it wasn't quite heavy enough, then I go, okay, then I'll go heavier on the second set. Um, and that's the setup for legs. Um, really simple, don't overcomplicate it, don't do too much. Like I say, that kind of setup, if you follow something similar to that, but phasing some different exercises in their place, you can't go wrong. Um, again, mindset with legs is just, it's like any other body part really. Train it hard, you want it to improve, don't go half fast. Um, and also make sure you enjoy it and make sure you've got some people around you that can spot if need be. So Yannick was obviously on board today for the squats. Um, yeah. If you don't have anyone around, use a hack squat or use perhaps a uh, other squat variation that doesn't need the attention of someone else. So there's never an excuse not to train hard, Let's put it that way. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that one guys. I'll be back for some more stuff in the very near future. But for now, I'm gonna sit on this chair and fall asleep.